Is technology at your work distracting you from actual work? Do you spend too much time troubleshooting PC or internet issues? IT Enabled can help! Our team of IT specialists can help you tackle your technology troubles and get you focused on growing your business in no time. Call to schedule your technology consultation. 936-225-3329 IT Enable, we're here to help. Well, we're excited today. We have got Jamie Bolden, and Jamie is with the SFA Center for Career and Professional Development. Thanks, Jamie, for coming today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Why don't you let all of our 600 plus listeners know a little bit about yourself, and then we'll jump in and talk about SFA. Yeah, so I've worked at SFA for about 12 years, and so I'm the director of our Center for Career and Professional Development. I've also worked in leadership and service programming. I worked in our College of Forestry and Agriculture for a little while, and I'm also an alumna of SFA. So I have a long history of um, being a lumberjack and working with working with lumberjacks. Um, I've been the in the Center for Career and Professional Development for around five five years now, okay. and so working with our students students and alumni to help them get jobs and then working with alum or working with employers who want to recruit our students. Nice. So, yeah. so did you grow up in Nacogdoches? I did not. I'm from the Houston area from Alvin originally, okay. but I uh, came home to... Home of Nolan Ryan. Oh, that is home That's of Nolan right. Ryan. Yes. We have a bronze statue of him in nice. front of City Hall and everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, but decided to, I wanted to move away a little bit to come to college. Mm -hmm. My sister um, had lived at home all through college and commuted up to U of H clear lake and i said i would like some separation yeah. <laughs> so uh so three hours was good and so it came up here and just loved it and um i have my bachelor's degree in journalism from sfa oh, cool. um i worked for a newspaper up in uh, paris texas for a couple mm -hmm. of years and then went to the university of tennessee for graduate school um for higher ed but then I got a job offer back at SFA, and so um, I've been back for about 12 years now. And so I love the Nacogdoches Lufkin area. It's a great place to live and raise a family and That's work. Right. And That's right. all that. well, yeah. good. well, we're excited to have you. Tell us um, about the Center for Career and Professional Development. What exactly do you do? So our office is kind of threefold. So we work with students and alumni on their career and professional development needs. So that can include things like resumes and cover letters, um, interviewing skills, things like that. Some of the kind of nuts and bolts stuff that they need to do in order to, to get hireable. We want them um, working on, you know, articulating the skills that they're learning through their courses and through extracurriculars and through their jobs and so we we work with them freshman year all the way up until they graduate um, off and on on just how to you know encouraging them to get involved encouraging them to get experience and then teaching them how to articulate those skills in writing and in their interviews and so we work with them to just kind of put them all together as a package for whenever they're getting ready uh, to graduate we host um workshops. We do a lot of presentations in classes. We work with, we'll do presentations for student organizations. We do career coaching appointments with them. So we get a lot of, I don't know what I want to do with my life, or <laughs> I thought I knew what I wanted to do with my life and I don't want to do that with my life anymore. So mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I don't know what. Um, we get a lot of well, mom and dad tell me that I should be a business major because I can make a lot of money, but I don't think I like business. I think I wanted, I want to do education. And so helping them navigate some of those kind of difficult um, conversations The we often tell students that we're kind of a neutral third party that I am, I am perfectly happy with whatever you choose. If you choose to do business, if you're excited about that and are passionate about it, great. I'm also great if you want to do education and you want to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes there can be some comfort in that where they're getting a lot of pressure, well-intentioned pressure, but, you know, they get they get pressured sometimes by family or friends who go, but you should do this because you would be so great at it. And they go, I don't, but I don't, I don't, do I don't want to do that. Yeah. And so it's helpful sometimes for them to come and talk to people on our team who are kind of neutral third parties where we go, what do you want to do? What are yeah. you interested in? And knowing that that's kind of a safe space to explore sure. that. And so, um, we do, uh, career assessments with them, helping them to identify their personality type and their interests. And mm -hmm. so kind of just trying to provide guidance and be a resource to them along the way. 
And so, and then we help them too with kind of navigating their job and internship searches. And so, how do I how do I look for a job? Where do I even where do I even start? Yeah. Do I apply for all the jobs on Monster.com and just wait and see what happens? <laughs> you know, and so kind of trying to help them to navigate through what can be a really um, confusing and stressful process, and just help them to develop a, a game plan. So, are all students required to come through your your center, or do you try to reach all students? We try to and we, uh, we try to reach out and engage. We have a lot of great faculty partners who will um, who will require their students to come and engage okay. with us, whether that's attending a career fair, um, submitting a resume for critique, doing a mock interview, things like that. And so we value a lot of those faculty champions because the students really listen to their faculty members and respect them and the faculty members going, you need to go here. This yeah. is important for you. And so we have a lot of faculty members in the six academic colleges who will require their students to that's come great. over. And sometimes they grumble, but it's funny when they come in for like a mock interview and they've had to come and they'll kind of grumble about it. And then they go, you know, this was really helpful. And I go, you know, your faculty member doesn't tell you to do things that they think are going to be terrible and painful for you. And they go, huh, okay, like, this yeah. is really helpful. I'm glad I came. And so um, there are a lot of, and then we have faculty who engage with us for class assignments and presentations and things. And so it's not a requirement for students to come, but we do a lot of work also with um, the orientation office. And so we present at each of the first year orientations nice. to all of those students uh, to talk to them about our services. They take an assessment as part of the orientation process. So we can kind of get that ball rolling with them as early as possible. Yeah. That's great. That's great. I, I would argue that you're one of the more important departments at the university. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, this is when the rubber meets the road for people who have gone through college and, right. and university with the intention of finding a job. And this is when all you put all of that into action. So in the time that you've been there, how has that changed? So like when you see all these students coming through what they want to do, I mean, I, mean, I, I can imagine it's, you know, your usual, like I want to go to law school, I want to be a doctor, I want to you know, do business. But has any of that changed in the last 10, 12 years? Some has and some hasn't. A lot of, in a lot of ways, students are students and they, they come in and they go, I'm not thinking about that yet. Yeah. I'll, I'll come and talk to you senior year. And that part hasn't changed where we go, mm, we probably ought to be thinking about that a little earlier. Yeah. Like they, yeah. they just feel overwhelmed when they come in. And so they're like, oh, well, I'll come and talk to you whenever I need a job or I need an internship. Mm -hmm. And so it is kind of a constant educational process with them to go. You can't just come in and say, I'm ready for my internship. You know, there are some steps we need to be yeah. taking along the way in order to get you ready for that. It really, though, is a, a campus-wide process for that. Like mm -hmm. we, you know, they're hearing about this from faculty members and from organization advisors. And we really value that about the university is that it really is kind of a campus-wide effort of, sure. you know, if you're not engaging with the Career Center how are you working on that? Is it that you have a faculty mentor who's helping you with that process? Mm -hmm. And so as long as they're getting that from some direction, we're, we're happy with that, whether it's in our office or not. But we do love to have them come in sure. as much as possible. Um, there is, you know, just kind of over the past 10, 12 years, just sort of switching from, you know, millennials over to, to Gen mm -hmm. Z, you know, you see differences in that where it maybe was more, well, I want a job that allows me, um, that pays me really well and gives me really good benefits. And, you know, we saw more of that, but now maybe you see more of, I want to find something that I'm passionate about. I mm -hmm. want to find something that I, you know, that I care about and mm -hmm. that will make a difference. And a little, I hear a little less of, I have to make a lot of money. You do still, you do still get some students who are like, I want to make a, six figures when I graduate and <laughs> we all go all. me too <laughs> yeah. but you do hear more of just about they're looking for something that they can be passionate about and yeah. interested in as opposed to necessarily being driven by what the salary is or what the benefits are and that speaks to that kind of generation z um, mentality that mm -hmm. they are wanting to find something that allows them to make a difference they want to know what's the purpose of this you know what mm -hmm. um what's the greater purpose that i'm kind of fulfilling yeah. through that work i think gen z is probably more than any generation I, i'm not a, I'm, a, I'm a millennial mm -hmm. and i'll i'll, I'll claim that <laughs> but uh, i think they're more afraid than anyone of of stumbling into like a soul crushing career yep. from what i've i've seen of it so i just wanted to understand if, if that's changed and if that's different uh, than it used to be. The research also says just that they, they've they seen their parents go through, you know, economic recessions. They've right. seen parents be sure. laid off. And so they um, they are, you know, they are concerned about that, but it's kind of paired with, um, I want to find something that will support me, but I also want to find something that I'm really interested in and, and really passionate about. Yeah, yeah so. interesting. It's, it's such an interesting process. And I think I've talked about this on the podcast before, but, you know, you're 16, 17 years old and 
you kind of have this decision thrust on you that says, okay, I've got to decide what I'm going to do for the next 50, 60 years. Mm-hmm. And I have to kind of decide right now. And then you go through the four years of school. And, and, and I think this is an awesome way to, to really help narrow that down and, and get you in a place that, that you want to be. So that's a, it's a really cool, really cool program. Yeah. Well, I was super excited when I saw that you guys were going to be on the podcast, because this is something that we're really interested in. And I want to know a little bit of, of more about how businesses can work with the Career Center. Mm-hmm. So I own a video production company, and we're always looking for people who have gone through film school, so like SFA and, and things like that, uh, to come and work with us. And we're always hiring crew and different things like that. Uh, so that's something that we're interested in. And I, I know a lot of our listeners who are also in business are interested in as well. So how, as a business owner or a business entity, can we work with you to help find employees? Yeah, we work a lot with this. The other, the other half of what we do is working with employers who mm-hmm. are wanting to recruit our students. And so there's a couple of different ways to to do that. One is to, you know, we utilize a system called Handshake, which is our career management platform. Mm-hmm. So all our employers, um, we get them into Handshake. So that way you can post those types of jobs for students to mm-hmm. see. Within that system, you can specify, I'm interested in students within the College of Fine Arts or within, mm-hmm. you know, these particular majors. Um, and all of that, that part of what we do is free to employers. Oh, so cool. that, yeah. And so that's helpful just to give employers a way to be able to post those jobs within a system that the students are familiar with mm-hmm. and are, are looking at. Um, we also, too, once we know, you know, about your company and the types of positions, if we know he's only, you know, he's real specifically looking for students with this kind of experience, mm-hmm. we sometimes can kind of help to facilitate those introductions to hey, I'm going to send an email over to the, the professors within mm-hmm. the film program or within the art program and just kind of give them a heads up of they're going to be posting positions within Handshake. They're a new employer on campus. And so we kind of help to facilitate those um, those introductions within mm-hmm. there because we know that um, sometimes, you know, the university can seem very big. And just mm-hmm. when, student, when people and employers are trying to get in, they're just like, I don't know who to talk to. And yeah. so we help to kind of make those introductions so that you then you then can get connected to faculty members who are more likely to know students who are, you know, who have that kind of experience within there. We are a centralized office, and so we serve all six academic colleges and all um, alumni can utilize our services for free as well. Okay. And so we don't do as much yeah. of kind of placement of students within opportunities, but we can help to kind of make connections with the people who can do more of that, who can Mm -hmm. say, this is the job that you need to, you know, Mm -hmm. they're they're better about grabbing the student by the hand and saying, this is what you need to Mm -hmm. do, go apply for this, you know? And so we help to just kind of help employers to navigate that a little more effectively as opposed to them just going in the directory and going, I don't know who to, I don't know who to talk to. Anyone can pick up the phone and call you and say, I have this position Mm -hmm. and I want to know if you've got anybody that you could send me a resume from things like that that, they, that simple we try yeah we we walk the employers through getting into handshake and posting those positions okay. within there because then you have at, all of our students can see those can see those positions okay. we then kind of take it the extra step of saying of sending um, positions over to faculty or letting faculty know hey we've got a new employer in the system they're looking for these types of students and so um, we typically don't send out like these are the five students that you should look at within there we like to give employers access to all the students because you never know where you're going to find students who have that experience mm-hmm. that you're looking for. It could be a political science major who knows sure. who knows sure. how to do that. And so we try to help to facilitate some of those connections, but then that gives the employer access to all of our students and alumni as well. So they can maybe snag somebody who they weren't expecting. Yeah. We also host um, career fairs each year. So this past year has looked very different. We hosted virtual uh, virtual hiring events, but the employers who tend to recruit at SFA and well as our students they want to go back in person and they're <laughs> desperately seeking yeah. some normalcy. Everybody's ready to. Yeah. And so we are hosting four in-person career fairs in the fall that employers can sign up for as a way to come engage with students in person. And so there's a part-time fair early in the semester. We host an accounting fair, um, a teacher job fair, and then our career and internship fair, which is really kind of our all majors event within there. But so we do a couple of different sort of boutique specific fairs and then we have a kind of our large all majors fair within there. And so those are all in person. Um, there is a fee associated uh, with the career fairs. That's the only thing that our office charges employers for is okay. to attend those career fairs. So we know the world really changed over the last year. How did recruiting change for you? It, this has been a challenging year of just trying to educate our students about what virtual recruiting looked like. We have always been a very 
hands-on, face-to-face, handshake kind of campus. Mm -hmm. And our students just went, we don't know how to do this. And so there were a lot of conversations about how to present yourself on Zoom, how to, you know, thinking about we maybe not need to have the pile of dirty laundry behind you while you're on. They just don't mean this and think about it. And um, they were thrust into it just like everyone else. And so teaching them how to navigate that environment and that virtual element is going to be, I think, here to stay in a lot of ways for recruiting. They, um, it is sometimes more cost effective for the employer if they can't travel. And so there, there is going to continue to be virtual elements of it within there. But for the most part, our employers have just been knocking on our door going, when can we come back? And mm-hmm. so we're we're happy to be able to start to facil- facilitate some of those again. Um, but yeah, there are going to be just, I think those virtual elements are going to be here to stay for a lot of employers. Yeah. Um, but I think we'll just see a mix of it going forward of in-person and the virtual parts of recruiting. For sure. Great. Well, so you've got upcoming graduates. What are they really looking for right now? So uh, they, I think a lot of them are looking for flexibility. And I think that's true of anyone looking for a job right now that just there's a lot of research that says that employees are seeking flexibility. They're seeking remote or, you know, half in, half out of the office and just looking, I think, for some flexibility within there. And not every, not every employer is going to be able to offer that. Um, But I do think that that's important to know that if your business has the potential to offer some of that, that that can be really enticing to uh, candidates right now that maybe Mm -hmm. they can work from home two days a week or, you know, or just have some of that um, flexibility in there if they don't necessarily need to be physically present within your space from, from eight to five Mm -hmm. every day. And so I do think that both upcoming graduates and, um, you know, people who have have some experience I think everyone's kind of seeking a little bit more flexibility where they can find mm. it yeah. Yeah, I think we all got a taste of it um, last year and for <laughs> some people it's good some people like the office environment but others like oh hey I can kind of do this from home and yeah. it works so you know good bad or otherwise I think that's it's definitely changed the landscape uh, I think probably forever I mean mm-hmm. I think it's definitely you see a lot of people who are their ask offices are asking if they want to go back to work and they just if I can work from home, I'd you know rather work from home. I yeah. mean, kind of enjoy being in my PJs and talking <laughs> talking on Zoom. But yep. um, I guess that's a, that's an interesting change. That's um, to see it from the college level that they're looking for that as they go into mm-hmm. employment for that flexibility. Yeah. Are you seeing more? And it, this may just be a, a projection or or uh, something that I'm seeing, but it, it feels like there's a lot of Gen Z or or younger students who are interested in entrepreneurship now Mm -hmm. like just there are tons of people I I guess it's seeking that flexibility maybe but are are you seeing that from the recruiting level where people are interested in going and working for themselves and doing small business yeah they've actually developed a major at SFA for entrepreneurism yeah I did not know that yep and so within the college of business they can major in entrepreneurism and the college of business has a lot of very hands-on experiences and trying to help to prepare them to to start their own business yeah we do get students who are interested in that there is also a rise in just students who own their own businesses, you know, or who are selling things on on Etsy. Etsy. Or, yeah. yeah. Um, part of that comes too from, I think, that seeing their families come from maybe some financial instability of saying, I need to have a side hustle. I need something that's bringing some income in for sure. me. Um, and I think, too, it gives them some kind of ownership in that. Of this, yeah. is, this is mine. This is a talent that I have that I can then monetize that's and make right. some money off of. But but yeah, they're, um, they recently developed that entrepreneurism major within there. So I'm excited to see what what comes of that and so start That's seeing some, some really cool stories yeah really interesting because I, I remember my generation we were all going through school and we wanted jobs at big companies that paid big salaries and it, there were a few people who wanted to go in business for themselves but now it seems like that's kind of the the big thing is mm-hmm. to, to go. My husband always says they want to go into business for themselves until they realize they have to pay insurance. Exactly and they have to, exactly they right. don't get paid when they take a vacation. Yep. And yeah. they, you know, if you like, take a vacation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. My, yeah. Dad, my dad owned his own business for about 30 years. And so I lived that of my dad working six days a week. That's and right. when he was a sole proprietor. And so when the business was, he was very good about, we took time for vacations and things. Mm-hmm. And he thought that was important. But he was very clear about when I, when I don't work, the we family doesn't make paid. money. That's yeah. Right. And yeah. so I remember that deeply. And so, yeah, when students come and talk to us about being interested in entrepreneurs, you know, I let them know about the entrepreneurs or major and, and about resources like um, the small business development yeah. services, like their Angelina College mm-hmm. um, and things like that. But I also encourage them, yeah, that you need to, you need to think about that it may not hurt to go and work for somebody for a little while just yeah. to kind of learn yeah. how that works, you know, or jump in. Like there's a lot of, um, 
you know, there's some something to be said for jumping in and taking a risk and okay. try them within there. But we do kind of encourage them to look at that from all sides because right. sometimes I'm like, yeah, I don't know if you've thought about yeah. the. Have you thought about all these things? You're right. Yeah, right. and how, right. to, how to pay taxes and that. Yeah, you may not you may not make any money your that's first right. year. You know, you're not going to get a salary years. immediately. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly yep. right. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, well awesome. if people want to reach out to you and and get information on your website and contact the students that you have at SFA. Mm -hmm. How do they do that? They can, our website is sfasu.edu slash ccpd. And so they can, um, that has information on there for, we've got an employer section in there that walks through kind of how to recruit at SFA, our different career fairs. Um, It has our contact information on there to where they can call and talk to us. We do encourage employers to, you know, if they're, if they're curious about recruiting and just kind of want to know, how to build a recruiting strategy that'll work at SFA, then we're happy to talk through that with them. Sometimes it's attending career fairs. Other times it's, um, you know, tabling on campus and kind of starting to build build your brand and name recognition. You know, employers can get frustrated sometimes when they're like, I have these great jobs and no one's applying for them. And we have to kind of walk them through. If the students don't know who you are and they don't know what you do, Mm -hmm. they're less likely to to jump on those great opportunities. And so coaching them through a little bit of kind of how to, how to start to build their brand on campus and what that what that looks like but we're happy to kind of meet them where they are and work with them at a minimum get them into handshake and let them know how to post those positions talk to them about career fairs but we're always happy to have conversations about well tell us more about the type of student you're looking for because then I can make those introductions to well here's our mass comm faculty and here's our film faculty and so they may be able to help to provide you an in with that pocket of students that nice. you're looking for within there nice well, this great. has been great. Yeah, absolutely. We hope that a lot of people reach out to you. Yeah, thank, thank you for having me. Thanks I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We appreciate your time. And thank you so much for listening again this week. If you want to catch the video version of this podcast, you can catch it on the Chamber Facebook page and on the Chamber YouTube channel. And if you'll do us a huge favor, if you'll rate and review the podcast wherever you're listening, that helps other people in the area who are interested in this type of podcast find it so that more people can listen to these great stories when we sit down every week. Thank you so much. And we will see you next week. Bye.